Should you lease a new car or buy it? There's a lot of money on the line and you don't want to make the wrong decision. That's why today I'm going to cover the three most important questions to consider before you lease or buy new. More on that starting now. Now, before we jump into the questions that will help you make sure you're making the right decision, it's important to have a basic understanding of the difference between leasing and financing a new vehicle. Leasing is an alternative form of financing when you're paying for a portion of the vehicle over a short term, typically around 36 months. Many argue leasing is kind of like renting, except when the lease is up, the buyer has the option to purchase the remaining balance of the vehicle for a predetermined amount. Leasing a vehicle is in many ways similar to a rent-to-own agreement in which you rent a home for a certain amount of time with the option to buy it when the lease expires. These agreements consist of two parts, a standard lease agreement and an option to buy, just like when leasing a vehicle. Financing is different from leasing, whereas with leasing you're paying for a portion of the vehicle with the option to buy the remaining balance at the end, financing consists of paying for the entire vehicle over a set period of time, typically 60 months or longer. Now that you have a good understanding of what these two options are, let's break down the questions that will ensure you put yourself in the best financial position when you're making your decision. The first thing to consider is, do you drive a lot of miles? Leasing usually comes with a 36 month term and a 12,000 mile per year restriction. You can choose to get more miles than this, but the more miles per year, the more costly the lease. This is because you're essentially paying for the depreciation of the vehicle associated with the extra mileage up front. Now don't get confused with the idea of miles per year your allotted miles per year is only reviewed at the lease turn-in date. So for example, if you have a three-year lease with 12,000 miles per year, you have a total of 36,000 miles you can drive until your lease is up. So it doesn't really matter how many miles you drive per year as long as your miles at turn-in date are under 36,000 miles. Financing, on the other hand, gives you the freedom to drive as many miles as you want, whenever you want. So if you drive a ton of miles, you probably shouldn't lease. The second thing to consider is, do you take care of your vehicles? If you don't, this could affect your pockets when you lease. Why? Well, at the end of your lease term, you can incur damage penalties for things like worn tires, dents, dings, smoke smell, interior stains, missing keys, missing manuals. You get the idea. You can purchase a lease and protection package to cover you over the lease term, but that's an additional cost that will increase your payment. When it comes to financing, no one is giving you a grade or penalizing you on the condition of your vehicle, unless you decide to trade in your vehicle or sell it outright. But if not, you don't have to worry about, say, scraping your rims on that curb that came out of nowhere. Bottom line is, if you think you can maintain the vehicle condition, leasing could be a great option. If not, add some sort of leasing protection or steer clear of leasing altogether. The third and most important thing to consider when financing or leasing is are the short-term or long-term costs of your decision more important? It's important to understand that whether you lease or finance a vehicle, you don't own that vehicle until you actually have the title on hand. But there are short and long-term financial consequences of your decision. Here's why. When you're leasing, your monthly payment will be lower. The money down required is typically less, if anything at all, and every three or so years, you're getting into a brand new car. On the flip side, when you lease, your insurance premiums are higher. You pay more in interest even though your payment is lower, and you'll always have a car payment. Not to mention, you have to constantly repeat the same leasing process about every three years. Basically, over the long haul, you're gonna be spending more money. When financing a new vehicle, your monthly payment is higher, money down required is typically more, and maintenance and repair costs will increase as you drive more and more. However, your insurance premiums will be lower, and banks tend to give more competitive interest rates when financing new vehicles, such as 0%, meaning the interest paid over the life of the loan is lower or even non-existent. Also, when your loan is paid in full, you no longer have a car payment, which results in more savings in the future. So in closing, the decision to lease or financing a new car is completely determined by your answers to these three questions. Do you drive a lot of miles? Do you take care of your vehicle? And are the short-term or long-term costs more important? If you're someone who loves routinely getting a new car, lives close to work, doesn't like putting money down, or doesn't mind continuous payments if it means that you can keep a lower payment, then you should lease. And if you're someone who drives a lot of miles, struggles to keep a clean car, enjoys the comfort in staying in one vehicle for a long time, or prefers paying the least amount of interest, even if it means a higher monthly payment, then you should probably finance. I hope this video was helpful, and as always, thanks so much for watching. I can't wait to hear whether you would lease or buy a new car and why, so let me know in the comment section below. Also, don't forget to download our free guide, The Eight Steps Before Buying a Car. You can find that link in the description area below. That's all for today. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Until then, I'm Matt Blatt. Take care, and I'll talk to you soon.